Hello everyone, welcome to this Hello. special session, EduVision Extra. Nice. We're Melissa and Roxana. Hi, welcome everyone. <laughs> and last episode we celebrated Space Day and had a very interesting chat with Jose Antonio Bagur, a mechatronics engineer from Guatemala, about his work with satellites. Yeah, Jose Antonio told us that the design, development and implement implementation of the Guatemala's first satellite, Quetzal Uno, started as a result of a very successful participation in the 2014 CANSAT competition in the U.S. that he worked on with a group of friends from the University of the Valle, the Valle of Guatemala. And there were so many questions from you that we invited again Jose Antonio to give answer to all of them. Yes. Welcome back. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Roxana Melissa. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me again. This is thank really exciting to be. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming again. We had yes. so many questions to ask you. Definitely. <laughs> okay. We get, let's get going. So the yeah. first one is, where did the satellite's name come from? Okay, well, the satellite's name is Quetzal, Quetzal 1. Uh, Quetzal is the name of the national bird from Guatemala and uh, the reason why we selected uh, the, that name it was because a national competition that was held in Guatemala where kids from schools from all over the country uh, proposed a name and then it wa there was a, a a competition like a likes competition so quetzal was the name that got more likes so that's why the that's why we we chose that okay cool interesting yeah and um, what is the most complicated part about the building a satellite well uh i think the most complicated part is personal and um it is something, uh, it is not something te technical because uh, technical issues, you, you get around them, but with personal issues like, for example, believing in yourself and believing and uh, in, in your work, it's really hard. So just to, uh, to, to believe in yourself, it, in ourselves, in in, and believing in the team was like the most hard part from in in all the the project. Yeah, true. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, and all like planning your own time, for example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also. Yeah. <laughs> um, is this based on the CubeSat form factor? And what hardware and software tools did you use to develop the satellite? Yeah, the Quetzal Uno uh, satellite is a one U, uh, a one unit CubeSat uh, platform or nano satellite, and its hardware it's uh, the seventy percent of the CubeSat of the Quetzal Uno CubeSat was designed in Guatemala, and it is mostly open source design, uh, open source hardware based design. And we use a lot of tools like from Arduino to uh, real-time operative systems, uh, a lot of, uh, of electronics and yeah, it, 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 it is a mix of a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, everything to make one thing make work. So it's, it's really cool. So yeah. they, people were also asking you like any device on designing antennas for CubeSats. Oh well, my 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 advice will be that uh, having the right equipment for making the right tests, uh, making satellites, it's about testing, testing, and testing. Like the the um, the success of a of a satellite mission depends on how many tests you can you can make before the launch is is made. So for every subsystem, not only antennas, um, be sure to have the right equipment for designing them and also for testing them. Okay. All right. Nice. Uh, what type of power and charger did the satellite use? Well, the satellite has two uh, main sources of, of power. The first one is uh, a, a set of batteries, of rechargeable batteries, 
and the second one are solar panels so the the batteries from the the chipset that it's its main power source are recharged by the solar panels great yeah. all right so we also have this question people asking if uh, did you have to reduce the weight of the device during development stages and if so how did you do it well, not not really, because when you design a CubeSat, you have to take into account the the standard uh, the the standard. So the standard mass or weight for a one U CubeSat is one point three kilograms. So you you have to be really really aware of that when you are designing the satellite. Um, but we we keep a tra we keep track like really really. Um, close to the mass budget and yeah yeah we, we didn't have to to reduce the mass we we always designed it when the thinking thinking about the mass so no it, it, it wasn't a it wasn't an issue for us but i think uh, it's that if you don't design a, a keeps out with the mass in mind you you can have some trouble so yeah, it, it depends on the mission on, and what you are putting inside the CubeSat. So there will be a lot of, of strategies to reducing mass. Yeah. Okay. Then we have a question. Uh, was it put in orbit by Falcon 9? And what was involved in preparing that? Yes, it was. Uh, uh, the Quetzal was put in orbit by a Falcon 9 rocket from SpaceX. Uh, it was awesome. I went to 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 the to the launch, and it was awesome. It, it is one of the best things you can live. Yeah, it's just a lot of energy. And how do we get into that? Uh, how do we get the Quetzal into the Falcon Nine? It was a process that it took us almost two years, and it it is mainly it is uh, security checks. So what you have to do is to be really, really, really uh, careful and you have to, to show SpaceX and, or, or the company or the space agency you are, uh, with, uh, you are using for launching your satellite that your satellite is safe and that it, it, it won't harm the, the, the rocket. Mm -hmm. So it was two years of security checks mostly. And it took us a lot of time, two years, because we are newbies in this thing. <laughs> so we do not have a lot of know-how and a lot of knowledge regarding launching. So we we have to, to learn a lot, but it is mostly security checks regarding the satellite and the launcher that is the rocket. Hmm. Two years, That's eh? That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So next question. Did the satellite follow a geostationary or polar orbit or some other trajectory? Mm, it wasn't a geostationary or polar. It was a, a LEO, that is a low Earth orbit. And a low Earth orbit is a, a orbit that is really, really close to the, um, to, is relative close to the Earth's surface. And it is normally at an altitude of less than 1,000 kilometers uh, and it, it can be as low as uh, 160 kilometers so it's really really close from from Earth's surface. Uh, Quetzal is in the ISS in the International Space Station orbit so yeah it's really close it's around 400 ki kilometers okay. the, the distance between air surface and the satellite. Okay. All right. But then how did you communicate with the satellite from such a distance? Well, uh, we used some um, RF tra tra transceiver uh, that it works in the UHF band. So um, it, it sounds like it's a lot of uh, 400 kilometers. It's a lot of uh, distance, but these transceivers are designed to work it to such distance, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't hard. Uh, maybe the test testing the the transceiver in the first stages of the of the satellite it was the hardest part. But after you learn how to use it, it it is really really 
simple like yes all right so uh, next question we had a question uh, did you have any problems with communication uh during the due to radiation or noise or any other issue well regarding space uh, like space uh, environment uh no but regarding the earth environment yes we have some issues when for example climate in guatemala was bad so we we have some communication issues and also for example the ground control station of uh, ubg is placed in a it, it is in a it is in a place where there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, antennas around mm -hmm. so we have some troubles with communicating at some positions when we position the antenna to some places uh, we found interference also we even have problems with a tree that it was just just <laughs> to the right or to the left I, I don't remember of the of the antenna of the ground control station so mostly it was earth based problem not 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 space based <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, does it have any form of propulsion? If so, how did that work? No, no, it doesn't have any kind of propulsion. Um, there's a lot of propulsion systems right now, and there's a lot of CubeSat that are using propulsion systems in space, and also they are testing new technologies. Mostly propulsion systems are based in propellant uh, technology, so they use uh, some kind of propellant, for example, plasma or yeah, plasma or something like that to, to make the thrust, to, to, to produce the thrust. But Quetzaluno is a really simple CubeSat, so we don't have any propulsion, maybe for Quetzaldos. Ah, that's, that's good to know, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Um, how much does this launch cost? How much? Or how? What? What was the budget that you had for this project? Well, the project cost uh, around two hundred and sixty thousand mm dollar. -hmm. Um, the project budget it, it was uh, well. The project the budget came from our university but also it came from a lot of people from outside uh, the Quetzaluno won a competition that is uh, organized by uh, by United Nations and the competition is named Kivo Cube so uh, the purpose of the Kivo Cube competition is to provide um, countries like Guatemala that countries that do not have any kind of aerospace infrastructure of or capabilities mm -hmm. to start developing those capabilities with the CubeSat launch. So Kibo Cube, um, uh, they gave us the, the launch, uh, the, the cost of the launch, that it was around $100,000. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and the rest was uh, UBG and also a, a lot of people for, uh, and institutions from outside and also inside. Guatemala. All right. Uh, then we have two questions left. First one, what did you learn from the launch that will help with the next launch? Uh, I think it, the most important thing is how to not make a satellite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, all the, yeah, all the things you do not have to make and to, to launch a satellite. But I think there's a there's so much learning in making uh, the first satellite. So yeah, I think that the most come from the security checks and also from the tests, from the environmental tests you have to put the satellite into in order to to launch it to space. So there was a lot of 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 knowledge we gain in those tests. So yeah, I think mostly is how not how not making a satellite mm -hmm. and how to launch a satellite like quicker and yeah. and yeah okay. yeah there's a lot of things to talk about <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can imagine and the last question we got is uh, would you like to send another satellite and if so what function would you like it to perform 
Uh, yes, yes. The, well, the, the answer is yes. When? Uh, I think we don't know in UBG. Mm. And the reason why is because we have to choose uh, a mission that that can improve the, the life of Guatemalans and also from people from all over the, all over the world. We do, do not want to launch a satellite just because because we want to. We want that this satellite ha have a, a special mission that can help for improving life of, of people in the world. So we are now like thinking about missions, thinking about what can we make. Um, but there's a lot of things like when you think about space, you usually think about space space uh, in uh, like for example satellites or or I don't I don't know like the moon. But space is really really big. Like space is really really big, and there's a lot of of opportunities out there. So this space assets, there's a lot of space assets. So right now we are like studying what. Our, our country needs and start thinking and proposing about a, a next mission, the uh, next Quetzal, and maybe it will be in the next few years. We, we, we hope so. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I want to hear more about it when you, when you know your mission and when you have your plans ready. Yeah, we need to bring you back then. <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. So that was it, I think. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jose Antonio. See you soon. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. See you. So uh, remember that you can read uh, Jose Antonio's article, Exploring IoT How Jose Antonio Bagur is Shining the Spotlight on Guatemala on Arduino CC Education Edubition. And you can also see the whole episode on our YouTube and Facebook channels. Yeah, and you find the link to the episode from that site too. So yes. everything's there that you need. And also exactly. from our education site, you can sign up for the Edu newsletter. And once mm -hmm. a week, we will send out all the interesting info for that week. So you get the links to the article, link to the episode and all different kinds of information. Exactly. And have you created an Arduino project already? Remember that you can share your project on our site, Arduino CC education eduvision and your project my your project may be presented here in eduvision and you can get some cool arduino merchandise yes we're looking forward to get some projects from you guys so now is the perfect time we're gonna start showing them from the next episode and all, all the way to the end of the season yes like sure there uh, oh. thank you for watching this eduvision extra we will be back next week, alive on Thursday 20th, as we celebrate Sherlock Holmes Day uh, with our guest, a specialist in escape rooms. That See would be then. awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.